In this video, I will explain how an architectural render and post digital drawing tell two completely different stories about your architecture project. I will also take you through my step by step process for producing a post digital drawing like this. Okay ladies and gents, welcome back to a brand new video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Thomas Rowtree. I'm an architectural designer and content creator. And if you're new, please just hit that subscribe button. It'd be much, much appreciated. Um, and like the video while you're at it. So for me, visual communication is the most important thing that we have in architecture to sell our projects to clients, critiques, tutors, peers. And of course, there are different types of drawings that explain different components of your architecture project. And when you put them together in a portfolio format or in a presentation, they should all communicate the story of your architecture project. So the two visualization styles that I want to talk about today is architectural rendering and post-digital drawing. And you'll notice that rendering and post-digital drawing are very, very different and they tell two completely different stories. Each style evokes a different emotion, a story, and express different components of an architecture project. So they're two very, very different styles. So first, rendering is all about showcasing a realistic visualization of your architecture project, showing the surrounding area, the context, showing the details and materiality, showing the environmental conditions with shadows, sunlight, etc. It's all about putting your building in a realistic environment and showing it as if it was an image, a photograph of a building. The development of rendering software such as Lumion have made rendering extremely powerful in communicating ideas very easily and clearly to clients. And the process of producing a render is fairly straightforward, especially with a software like Lumion. For example, to create a render, Lumion allows you to render in real time using Live Sync meaning that it's easy to set up your view and frame in your 3D model. You have access to a vast content library where you can import items such as people, trees, vegetation to create a realistic environment. The latest Lumion 2024 update includes an upgrade in ray tracing items and materiality, meaning that you can create really realistic reflections and refractions on materials like glass or water, for example. All of these features in Lumion help you to create a realistic environment where you can change the environmental conditions, you can change the time of day to set the scene and environment of your render. You can even add color correction and change the style of your render to produce something like this. And if you'd like to create a render and use all of these features, especially the upgraded 2024 features, you can follow the link down below in the description to get access to Lumion and you can get it for free if you're a student or faculty. So I'd definitely jump on that if I was you. This realistic use of lighting, materiality, and environmental conditions is really great for putting your building in a position where you can clearly look at it and get a really good understanding of what the building will look like if it were to be built. So a post-digital drawing is almost the opposite. It's not about creating a realistic scene and, and having perfect materiality and lighting. It's more about creating an environment that expresses emotion and atmosphere. And rather than it being a realistic image, it's more about being representational to try and communicate how it would feel to be in that space. It has much more of a collage and layered effect using textures and hatches, which I really enjoy. So let me show you how you can create a post-digital drawing of the same scene. So the first thing we're going to do is create a base for my drawing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to render my project in black and white with no vegetation or anything, just a simple model showing the shadow, maybe some materiality, and I'm just going to use this as a base for my drawing. And you'll see further down the line how I integrate this into my drawing. The next thing is to go into Rhino and get some line work out of my model. I'm going to make 2D, bring the line weight into Illustrator and adjust the line weight so I've got a, a kind of harder uh, outline around the building, but then some more finer work in the details. And once I'm happy with the line work, I can then bring that into Photoshop with the black and white render. And now that I'm in Photoshop, I can begin to layer the drawing. So the first thing to do is to create a color palette. And what I usually do here is I'll scour the internet, look for different color palettes and find something that I'm happy to work with. So for this drawing, I'm going for shades of blue and gray, which I think will work really nice. So the first thing that I'm going to add is the sky. So using the shades of blue, I'm going to select one of them and start filling in the sky. And I'm just gonna do it as a solid blue color with no gradient because I want to give that kind of post digital style. And I can do this using select tool in Photoshop, selecting the sky area and filling it blue but I feel as though this probably looks a little bit too flat, so I'm going to add a grid pattern. And I like to add grids and hatches to my drawings just to give it that extra level of detail and layer and kind of style to the drawing. Otherwise, they can become a little bit too bland. So hatches like grids or stripy lines are a really good addition to a drawing in my opinion. So just using the layering tools, 
I'm going to overlay the grid over the blue sky to get something like this. The next thing is start adding some blue to the water. So currently, obviously, it looks quite realistic. The water, you can see the reflections and refractions. But I want to kind of tone this down a little bit and give it a bit more of a, a collage look. So I'm going to select the water areas, fill it blue, and using the layering tools, I can get something that looks kind of sketchy or, or kind of post-digital style-like but also still kind of showing the ripples and the effects in the water. The next thing is start adding some building materials and textures. And this isn't necessarily about creating something that looks really realistic, but I am going to use materials such as kind of plaster or concrete or kind of coarse stone to kind of give some kind of representation of, of the spaces and materiality. So what I'm going to do is very simply using the magic tool, selecting the areas that I want to fill, fill them with patterns that I've previously created, and the reason why I'm using a coarse stone at the back here is to give it a little bit more color to the image because I feel like if I'm using a lot of stone and grays and blues, it can become a little bit flat. So the coarse stone is adding a bit more depth to the drawing and a little bit of a touch of color. The next thing to do is add trees. So these are just simple trees, PNGs trees that I've got off Google, but I'm going to make them all white because I'm once again kind of continuing the, the color scheme of whites, grays, blues, and I think this kind of inverted look on the blue sky will look really nice with the trees. So I'm just gonna get a couple of different types of trees, start positioning them and overlaying them and changing the opacity slightly to give a bit of hierarchy and depth to the image. So you've got the big tree at the front and then you've got some smaller ones that are filling out the space behind just to show that depth. I'm gonna add some water trickling out of these kind of water features. So what I'm going to do here is literally use uh, the paint tool, color in a bit of blue, kind of make it kind of rough so it looks like water's falling. And then I'm gonna use a motion blur to give that kind of moving water effect. And you get something like this, which is subtle, but it's a nice, nice touch and a nice addition to the drawing. One of the most important things to add to this drawing is now gonna be people. And I think you have to be really careful with adding people to a scene. Of course, it's really important because it shows um, activity or scale or all of these different types of things. People are really, really crucial, uh, but you have to be very selective and not overdo it. Um, and be careful so it matches the style of the drawing. So what I'm going to do is add these people that are kind of walking off into the distance, which I think looks really nice. They kind of look like they're on holiday. And I'm going to apply this filter to it. So this gives it kind of like this, this grainy um, kind of cutout effect. And then I'm going to add a shadow on the floor by simply duplicating them, stretching them out and skewing them onto the floor, making it all black, dropping the opacity. And then you've got some people in the space and you can instantly get a feeling of scale and activity and what is actually going on in the space. And then now it's just all about adding a few final details. So I'm gonna add a sun, and what I'm gonna do is actually add a outer glow because I want the kind of glowing effect of the sun. And then I'm gonna add some birds, once again, invert them on the drawing. Birds, I think, are just another great tool to show an environment or, or generally just some kind of movement or activity. And then the final piece of this drawing is going to be cropping the sky and making it a bit more of a collage -y effect. So I like doing this because it gives it a kind of a framing and it kind of guides your, your attention to certain features of the drawing. So for example, here I want uh, the building that is kind of overlapping and overhanging. I want that to be the focal feature of this drawing. So I have that in the center. So I'm simply just going to highlight the area, invert it um, and add a layer mask. And voila, you got something like this which I think works really nicely, and it's obviously a very different style to the render. Uh, but you can see how I've used the render as a backdrop and as a, um, as a layer in there that really helps create some kind of realistic scene, but in a slightly more um, kind of representational way. So what I'd like you to take away from this video is that there are different ways of communicating your architecture projects. And I think it's really important to be specific and careful when you choose your communication tools because as you can tell, those two different types of visualizations tell two different kind of stories and narratives about your project. If you want to capture more of an emotion or a stylistic approach, I would definitely suggest doing a post-digital drawing. But if you want to put your building in a realistic environment with accurate lighting materiality to show what it would look like in that space, if it was to be built, if it was literally there, then I would suggest using a render. So sometimes it's about picking which drawing is right for the particular scene or moment that you want to express in your project. And that is gonna be a wrap on today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash the thumbs up button, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.